18 thing. Yeah. You know, you know. How you doing, ladies and gentlemen? It's your boy OB with the television. How you doing late in the morning, night, whatever time you guys watch the video? So, it took me a little while to let this soak in with Trey being traded. Um, <clears throat> I honestly feel, you know, you come into the camp knowing that you the number two quarterback to Brock Purdy. Brock played great towards the end of the season. Unfortunately, he got hurt. So, he kind of the same boat you was in, what Trey was in. When he got, you know, his chance to start, he came in there, started, got hurt. Then the starter was once the, well, the backup that once was the starter became the starter again. Then he got hurt. And then the third string quarterback that wasn't even supposed to play became the starter. And you lose your spot to Sam Donald. You go in the office, you get the day off. Even though John Lynch and them guys said, I really want him on the team. Shanahan's feeling bad to me. I feel like I let Trey down. It's not your fault. You know, he coming in and say, hey, I'm a third string quarterback. Trade me. You get traded to the Cowboys for a fourth round pick. After us giving up three first rounders and a third rounder, to get back and return a fourth round pick. All because you was a third string quarterback. Go to the Cowboys and become a third string quarterback. You were the same boat that you was in with the 49ers, which I feel like, I don't want to say it's a coward move, but I, I just feel like it's not a good move. You know, you, once you face adversity, you become, oh, I want to get traded. Get me to a new team. Yeah, you, you're going to start over everywhere you go, you know. But at the same time, you got to be able to say, hey, look, I'm going to take this on the chin. I'm going to work my way back up to number one. Same situation Brock did when he was in college. Same thing he did in the NFL. He was a third string quarterback. He worked his way up. Um, a lot of people gonna say Trey didn't have a chance. I mean, it's the NFL. I mean, you don't got that many chances. A lot of people get cut. It's just the way it is, it's part of the business. Uh, now, did he, do I think, I, me personally, I think, I think Trey is better than Sam, but Sam has got that veteran presence. I think it's more security in Sam Donald. You know, put him in the system with the first team office that we have. I feel like he can make, he can do damage. Same thing with Trey though. Trey is more electrified than Sam Donald. Trey to me probably did great on the starting offense, but it, it hurts to know that he got traded because he wanted to get traded. And it, it, it's just wild, you know. But at the same time, it's like, hey, look, it is what it is. We came this far. There's no point of even, you know, trying to figure things out. If you want to get traded, you want to be part of the team. You don't want to be part of the system. All right, cool. We got to take every negative thought out of the team. Um, but, you know, I ain't gonna harp too much on um, Sam Don. I said Sam Don. The Trey Lance situation. So we gonna go past that. But we already know what it is. You know, Trey. I hope you have a great season. I hope you get the opportunity that you want over there in, in Dallas Cowboys or being a Cowboy. Uh, but yeah, no hard feelings. <laughs> but you know, I was reading something today talking about Bosa, and they spoke this on SBN Nation. Four nine rules optimism in Nick Bosa's contract. Team expects massive number. A little bit more optimism here with the contract. The 49ers because the team is have, I've talked to expect him to put up a massive number somewhere in the three, thirty million per year. <clears throat> He's considered the best pass rusher in the NFL. The 49ers have prioritized, prioritized that they know that. They want to go to get this done. It's just a little deal of this magnitude with a lot of a lot of about it, uh, the structure, the amount of years, and a lot of sort out. So it's still some time here. So, so right now, it's like, you know, I really feel like Bosa is going to get that big time contract that that, that surpassing past every linebacker, that's a linebacker, every defensive lineman, the top dog in the NFL. <clears throat> and he deserved that. And I really believe he deserved that. Oh, uh, I think both is going to be there week one. Um, I'm thinking about next week, the, build, the deal should be done. Uh, cutting trade also helps with the money as well. So 
And I read something that said how Trey Lance, Nick Bosa, and Pat 49 focus on salary cap. Consider the the that the 263 million tab for 2024 doesn't even include Bosa Bill yet. The 49ers are already over the projected cap of the season. Trading Lance freed up 2024 cap space, but the 49ers can't abandon the efforts of financial efficiency now. Every dollar mail will matter in 2024 when the 49ers will be looking to uh, <clears throat> attend the cap compliance while minimizing the collateral roster damage. So, Trade and trade is going to help a little bit. I mean, not a massive change, but it's something good that's going to help both to get more money in the sense of that. So um, having that, you know, I really feel like it's going to be a lot. It's going to, it's going to be a lot for us. Um, he's going to get he's going to get paid. So we already know we're going to lock him in for a long time. A long, long time. So <laughs> I just want to clear that up as well. So going to week one. I know I'm all over the place. I just want to touch everything at once. Uh, going to week one, we're playing the Pittsburgh Steelers. Um, I think it's going to be a good game. I think it's going to be um, it's going to be a good game for us. Um, I'm not going to sit there and try to predict the score or anything like that. Um, but I really feel like in this game against the Pittsburgh Steelers, it's going to be more offensively. It's going to be a highlight on the offense end. Um, we got to see how Brock do a whole game. This is the scary part about, you know, losing Trey. I mean, like I said, my, <clears throat> I don't have no situation, no, no ill will against Sam Darnold. But, you know, I'd rather have Trey in that position outside of Sam Darnold. So, with Brock going in there, but, you know, we still got Christian McCaffrey. Uh, we got Mason. Elijah Mitchell gets a little injury situation, but we got backs that can go in behind him. Um, we got a great receiving core, good offensive line. Uh, we just want to see Brock Purdy, you know, provide his essential needs as a quarterback. Get the ball out your hand, feed the rock, read the coverage, just get the ball out your hand to the point where, you know, you're not throwing interceptions, you want to throw it away. You're not trying to go out there to be perfect, but you ain't trying to make dumb mistakes. So, good thing Kittle back. Um, we got a great receiving core, man. That's what Ronnie Bell, could do. I'm pretty sure they're going to put him with the first team. Uh, Juwan Jennings, well, Juwan in third, you know, he looked, he looked pretty sharp. Um, so it's like, you know, seeing the offensive side, that's what I want to highlight the most. I mean, a defense is going to be the defense, number one defense, even though we got a new defensive coordinator, it's the same system. I've seen it, even though when we played the Chargers, everybody between this second team was in, but I could see the, I could see the urgency. That's what I wanted to see, the urgency on the defense. It's the same urgency that we had last year. So if we hit the ground running off gate, Send a message early in the, in the NFL. We're gonna be good. We got a second year quarterback in Pickets, um, so they got a nice little run game and a decent receiving core. So it's like I'm looking at the defense end. I'm like, look, this could be a walk in the park for you guys. But on the other end, the defensive end, you know, against their defense, they got you know everybody got to know T.J. Watt. You know, that's the big name one. That's in T.J. Watt. T.J. Watt. So I'm pretty sure we're gonna see a lot of double team where TJ Watt at. So you're gonna see a lot of Kittle going Kittle on TJ Watts. Um I'm pretty sure we're gonna see a lot of bootlegs and counters and things of that nature. Just stay away from them. Um But as far as the pass game goes, I don't really fear no defensive back. I mean they got Patrick Peterson, we dealt with him when he was with the Arizona Cardinals. Um, we also, you know, kinda of know how to handle that situation. You know, they got Sean Alexander as well. Shout out Alexander. Um, Quan, sorry, Quan Alexander. Sorry, I said Sean. <laughs> um, Fitzpatrick back there as well. So it's like, you know, it's going to be a fun game. Um, but I actually got us winning that one. It's my, it's, my, it's my decision. I got us winning that one. I'm like, I ain't going to go score wise, but I got us winning that one. And this year, I'm going to be very, very, very honest with the, with the game. So I got us winning that game. So y'all prepare, y'all get prepared for uh, September 10th, you know. Versus the Pittsburgh Steelers, we gotta go in there and get that dub, start the game off royal. We gotta, we, we can't be like we were last year. Towards the end of the season, we fighting to get a spot in the playoffs. We solidify ourselves, put us in a in a, in a playoff spot, and don't worry about it later. We can be the strongest team in the West, so we're well, NFC West. We're the strongest team, so we gotta win our division, not that out, get in the playoffs, and make some noise. But I ain't gonna hold you guys too long. 
Make sure y'all like, share, comment, subscribe, all the above because you truly, truly appreciate it. Uh, this is my new subscribe, my old subscribe, my favorite subscribe. I truly, truly, truly appreciate you guys, man. Thank you.